Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here and I'll be going over how to set up your character as an arms warrior in 8.3. This will cover all of your talents, essences, traits, corruption gear and also the playstyle of an arms warrior. When it comes to your standard talents, nothing else has really changed except for the fact that in for the kill can sometimes be an option. In for the kill can give more damage overall if you can maintain uptime during your war breaker windows. Haste is your most powerful stat, so gaining more will increase your damage a lot. However, if you're playing with Bastion of the Might trait, then you should probably always stick with Avatar, so that you can make use out of one trait, otherwise you could spec out of said trait to use a different one. As for PvP talents, Arms Warriors have a huge arsenal of good talents, being able to interchange most depending on what you meet. Sharpened Blade will be your best one here for offensive purposes. Using it at the right time can be troublesome for enemy healers, as most of the time they can't heal through it. This can create big kill windows or force defensive cooldowns in order for your kill target to survive. A lot of your other PvP talents are mainly great defensive ones, taken to give your teams more ways of surviving against teams that could be troublesome to live against. Nowadays, Master and Commander has been chosen more often due to two big reasons. Firstly, it turns Rallying Cry into a much stronger defensive cooldown, making it into a great team defensive to have for you and your team. Secondly, with stamina increasing due to item level upgrades, you'll gain more value from your Rallying Cry, giving you more HP, making it harder for affected targets to die. Using it at the right time when you or your partner are low on HP will be the best way to use it in order to prevent a death or potentially other defensive cooldowns from being used. Be careful with it though, as when it expires, it could easily take you down if you are too low on HP, so you'll need to be healed relatively well. Moving on to essences, there are a number of new ones, but none are really worth noting apart from Breath of the Dying. This essence is absurdly powerful right now, being the best offensive major power to use if you want extra pressure. The rank 3 version of this essence can work in arenas, by killing pets or mind flay corruption tentacles that spawn an arena from corruption gear. As you can see, this can deal a devastating amount of damage. Even if unable to proc the rank 3 aspect of this essence, it can still be very powerful to use on targets above 80% HP or below 20%, to reduce its cooldown heavily and apply pressure throughout the game. It will also make it a great mine essence, dealing increased damage as well as giving corruption resistance, a nice little feat for 8.3. This means that usually your major power essence will be Breath of the Dying for offensive playstyles or Conflict and Strife for a more defensive playstyle. That leaves you with the minor essences usually being between these four, making the miners dependent on whichever of the two is in your major slot. When it comes to trades, in order of strength, you'll be wanting to get 3 Crushing Assaults, 1 Gathering of Storm, 1 Striking the Anvil, and 1 Bastion of Mind. Crushing Assault remains your best as it can give high random burst, being difficult to deal with, and being high value anytime it procs, which can surprise your enemy. When it comes to the minor traits, these have been heavily nerfed in 8.3, making them hardly valuable, which means you'll mainly want to pursue your main traits as best as you can. Corruption gear is a new and vital part to gearing your character. Arms Warriors have quite a number of pieces that can be used for different purposes in Arena. Expedient is the highest sim damage for an Arms Warrior, as it increases your haste, which gives Arms Warriors an incredible amount of damage. Required, you can maintain uptime. Stacking haste will be part of your gearing, so the more haste you can get, the more valuable it becomes due to this corruption gear, increasing your DPS. Other great offensive corruption gear you could take are Gushing Wounds and Infinite Stars. Gushing Wounds is extremely powerful as it gives quite a big margin of extra DPS as well as costs very little corruption so you don't have the high risk factors of playing with high corruption. Infinite Stars costs a lot more corruption but can deal a high amount of pressure adding to your burst damage as well which could also bait out the spells if you can get high stacks of it onto enemy targets. 
Those are the best offensive corruptions, which leaves us with one corruption that can be excellent for survival purposes, being Surging Vitality. This simply gives you a prog for extra versatility, but it's a high amount with good uptime, making you more durable throughout an arena match, which may be needed in order to survive well. Now that we've covered the best corruption pieces, we can now get into the playstyle of an arms warrior in 8.3. As we know, in 8.3, tank triggers were nerfed heavily, meaning that an arms warrior can be easier to kill, making it harder to outlast teams in general. This means that arms warriors may need more help to survive in general from your partners. But it also means that we can now use offensive trinkets instead. These will increase our damage and make us better damage dealers in general, now playing more offensively than usual. So arms can deal a ton of damage in all situations, especially in two target ones, spreading dots, dealing as much damage as possible, which can lead to unsuspecting kills. Even though most of your gameplay involves dealing damage, another portion of your gameplay will be to peel the enemy team, well, during their offensive setups. This involves using your toolkit in order to reduce pressure from the enemy team. Peeling well at the right time can save the use of other strong defensive cooldowns that your partners have and may need later for other offensive setups. This will in turn make your team harder to take down, being able to survive well at troublesome moments that could cost you the game. The third and final big playstyle to have, which may not happen every game, is to survive well yourself if needed. Now that arms warriors can be kill targets for quite a few compositions, you'll need to be able to use your toolkit to live well. This could involve heroic leaping out of trouble and line of sighting the enemy team in order to not tank too much pressure. Another example could be using your spare reflect well against wizard cleaves to take less pressure, or as seen here, reflecting lone cyclones in order to not be vulnerable. That showcases how arms warriors are played in 8.3. As always, make sure to plus skill this guide if it helped, and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.